you saved us, Jean. I owe you my life. No thanks. I've seen it and I'm not impressed. Hello YouTube, this is DVD Review Studios here, and today I shall be doing a review on the complete third season of Bob's Burgers on DVD. This is a free disc DVD set containing 23 episodes of the show, and if you're familiar with the Bob's Burgers DVDs, you will know that these are not proper DVD releases. For the majority of the show released onto physical media, they are all pretty much made-on-demand editions bar season one, which I have reviewed on my channel if you want to check out my review on this season. But other than this season, they're just not proper DVD releases, which is really disappointing. Uh, so for the comparative purpose, this particular season includes bonus features on there, all 13 episodes with silverback DVDs that basically sort of the proper stuff you'd expect to find in a store. Whereas the made-on-demand editions from season 2 onwards were manufactured very cheaply to keep costs down, which I would imagine the show maybe didn't sell as well onto DVD, which is a little bit strange considering how popular this show is and how incredible it is for a family-style sitcom, in my honest opinion. Um, but through web stores such as primarily really Amazon, it's just a cheap alternative to make made-on-demand editions where you keep costs down in terms of the printing quality and the actual DVDs themselves are not made to last. They are just shitty little purple back DVD sets, which are almost like bootlegs. And ironically, the bootlegs, which I've shown on my channel before when ranting about the DVD releases not being up to standard. And I even got the show's creator, Lauren Bouchard, to respond about this, which I was absolutely amazed about. But the bootlegs are surprisingly better quality than the actual DVD releases. Uh, so if you want to check out a little bit more info on that kind of topic, I've got a couple of videos on the channel which I'll put links to on screen, but... Otherwise, for the third season release, this one is pretty much the same as the others as far as the quality goes. It's okay, it's watchable, all the episodes are there, thankfully, um, but there's no bonus features, which is incredibly disappointing, and the coloration is a little bit iffy on these made-on-demand editions as well. Some of the sort of more bright and vibrant colours just don't transfer very well onto these DVD releases, such as the colour yellow in particular seems kind of really washed out and faded, it doesn't look as bright as it should. Um, Jean's shirt in particular, just to kind of highlight something that is of that colour, doesn't really show up all that well on the DVD, which is kind of disappointing, but overall, anyway, to talk about the third season, I've really been sleeping on this third season to review it. I've reviewed seasons 1, 2, and 4 on the channel, and I don't really know why I skipped over season 3, but I've been re-watching the show recently, and this season is absolutely phenomenal. Really enjoyed the majority of the episodes, there's a couple of weak ones in there, but otherwise, for the majority, it is very, very enjoyable. And so, throughout this video, we shall be detailing my thoughts on all 23 episodes that are included. Here's the back cover with a brief summary of the season, along with a breakdown of each individual episode and which disc you can find them on. Bit of a typo there, season 1. Third season. Hmm. And then images from some of the episodes that are included. Your total runtime is looking at 506 minutes. Nothing else really notable on there, and even less notable are the discs. Unfortunately, no artwork on these, and like I mentioned, they are just the cheapo, purple-backed, made-on-demand discs. Nothing really of consequence at all on there, unfortunately. Anyway, going through the episodes, first up on disc one we have Izzy Rider, which is a brilliant opening, delivering one of the funniest Louise-based episodes where a bully steals her bunny hat. And weirdly, before watching this episode, I'd never really questioned the bunny hat at all. But I love how her head isn't shown without the hat, basically throughout the series, including this episode. And the rest of the episode is a typical kind of revenge plot where Louise tries to get her hat back from the bully character Logan. Full Bars is weirdly another bully-themed episode set on Halloween where the kids trick-or-treat in a nearby town and experience an event called Hell Hunt. But I love the side story to this, which is focusing on Teddy hosting a Halloween party, which is then turned into a murder mystery when someone supposedly stands on his pet guinea pig, Francis. Live, damn it, live! Bob Fires the Kids was honestly one of my favourite episodes where we look into Bob's childhood and see how saddening it is 
from how he wasn't a fortunate child to being kind of overshadowed by his father in their own family restaurant. And it's a really great character development episode, in particular for Bob, where he fires his own children from the restaurant in order to avoid becoming like his father. And I also love how they brought back the character of Mickey, voiced by Bill Hader from season two. Mutiny on the Windbreaker was a very twisted episode where Bob impresses an estranged sea captain with his cooking. And so Captain Flarty, as he's called, invites Bob and the family over onto his cruise ship, where Bob is asked to cook just for one evening, but things aren't all what they seem, with random kind of horror elements thrown into the episode as the family's then kidnapped and forced into a vacation. An Indecent Thanksgiving Proposal was another one of my favourite Bob-themed episodes, where we experience his Thanksgiving traditions ruined by Mr. Fish Odor, one of my favourite characters, who basically tries to impress a woman from his past, posing as a married man, using Linda and the kids and pretending that they are basically his own family. And I love the sequence at the very beginning of this episode where Bob is in the grocery store talking to the turkeys, which is honestly one of the funniest scenes throughout the entire season. Will it be you? You're a big one. Have you been working out? A little. Well, you look great. The Deepening was another episode with a prominent focus on Mr. Fish Odor, and I enjoyed the Jaws-style parody throughout this with a fairground attraction shaped like a shark unleashed upon the town. Tina Ranosaurus Rex was one of my favourite Tina-focused episodes, and really one of my favourite episodes of the entire series, where Bob allows her to drive his car in an empty car park, where she crashes into the only car in the area, and this spirals out of control where Bob asks Tina to lie about the accident, which then gets progressively worse, in terms of more or less just insurance fraud issues, and I love how this guest stars Bob Odenkirk. Tina on the left, you're about to hit that car, the brakes, hit the brakes! Uh. And last up for disc one is the unbearable like likeness of Gene, which is an interesting Gene-related episode where we see him genuinely conflicted over an annoying girl, who has a crush on him, and he dates her to embrace his music passion, since her father happens to own a music studio. Moving on to disc two now, we have Bob Rest Ye Merry Gentle Mannequins, another kind of twisted episode, this time being Christmas themed, where Bob's uncle passes away, and in the will, he inherits a storage unit, only to find a creepy man living in there called Chet, who was, I believe, voiced by Zach Galifianakis. And the family invites him to stay over for the Christmas season to find that he has a weird fascination with mannequins. Mother Daughter Laser Razor is genuinely one of the funniest episodes of this season, primarily focusing on Linda trying to connect with Louise, who has always favoured Bob as her preferred kind of parent. And I love the dialogue throughout this episode. It's definitely one of the best written episodes with some really great one-liners throughout. <laughs> She has it, we're fine. Nude Beach was one of my least favourite episodes where the health inspector Hugo takes a leave of absence from harassing Bob's restaurant and instead becomes a nudist of all things, which allows Bob to awkwardly befriend Hugo's replacement, Tommy, making a forced friendship that Bob really doesn't want to be a part of, but does so anyway in case the restaurant is shut down. Broadcast Wagstaff School News was overall a very good episode for the premise, which seemed very similar to the kids' news episode of The Simpsons, only with the Wagstaff School students engaged in a news team, where Tina tries to break a big news story of a serial pooper, and this had a great side story where Gene starts impersonating Bob. Next up is My Fuzzy Valentine, which delves into Bob and Linda's marriage looking at how they met, where Bob is determined to get the best gift for Linda while she sets up the restaurant for speed dating. Linda Pendant Woman is a really weird episode in contrast to the last one, where Linda leaves her job at the restaurant to work in a grocery store, which slowly eats away at Bob, where he appears selfish for feeling unnoticed without her. OT The Outside Toilet is an E.T. parody episode, which we have seen time and time again in shows such as Futurama and American Dad, where Gene discovers a crate in the forest containing an advanced Japanese toilet, and he oddly befriends it. And last up on disc two, we have Topsy, which is a really funny Louise-based episode, 
where she goes out of her way to get back at her substitute science teacher who forbids her from using a volcano diorama at the school science fair. And since he is such a big fan of Thomas Edison, Louise then plans to exploit this, making it known that Edison was an electrocutioner who experimented and killed an elephant. And this is apparently a true fact from what I have briefly read, which I was really surprised about. Um, I would presume it's very much embellished for this episode, but definitely an interesting thing to look into if you are interested. And for disc free, we have a couple of iffy episodes, but the majority of them are okay. Uh, first up is Two for Tina, which is decent enough, where Tina dates a boy named Josh, who is a ballet dancer, where she manages to orchestrate a jealous kind of love triangle revolving around her and her longtime crush, Jimmy Jr. It's Snakes a Village was an interesting episode where Linda surprises the family with a vacation to Florida to spend time with her parents. With a side plot about the kids trying to hunt down a snake accused of eating a dog in order to claim a hundred dollar reward. Family Fracas is one of my least favourite episodes of really the entire show. With a really basic plot about the family of five replacing a family who drop out of a TV game show. And the family keep winning the games, but lose out on the main prize of a new minivan. And this episode just felt really repetitive and disinteresting. Next up is the kids run the restaurant, which is fairly simplistic in terms of the plot. Where Bob cuts his hand open and leaves the kids in charge of the restaurant. Where they open a secret underground casino beneath the restaurant, which oddly becomes a great success, especially when Mr. Fish Oda joins in. Boys for Now was another great Louise-based episode where she develops a crush for the first time, this being on a boy band, which was made all the more amusing from her criticisms of Tina for falling for people so easily. Carp Museum was a decent enough episode where the Wagstaff School take a trip to a museum with Bob participating as a volunteer, and each of the children tries to engage with their trip buddy, which leads to some great character development throughout. And last up we have The Unnatural, which is a fairly decent season finale, primarily looking at Gene trying to competently learn how to play baseball. But I loved the side plot to this one, where Bob installs a new espresso machine in the restaurant, and Tina essentially becomes a coffee connoisseur. And one of my favourite moments throughout this was the really trippy, hallucinatory sequence of animation, showing her sudden love for coffee, which definitely made the episode much more enjoyable. So that's going to do it for my review on the third season of Bob's Burgers. I hope you did enjoy. Overall, a mostly positive season relying very heavily on character development, but was overall very well written as far as the overall season goes, which utilizes the best in each character for their kind of specific episodes. And I still find this series really as a whole very underrated. I guess it doesn't help that the DVDs are somewhat hard to come by. But it's a show that, regardless, I highly respect for its unique comedy style for the family sort of sitcom genre. And I have had many, many hours of laughter throughout this series overall. And this season was definitely one that was very enjoyable. And if you're looking to get into a new animated sitcom, Bob's Burgers is one that I would highly recommend. So if you did enjoy this review, please do leave a like down below. Let me know in the comments what is your favourite episode from this season. And for more videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, a DVD Review Studios. Are you threatening me?